I wanted to continue the 802.11 spatial reuse. Remember that I have done part one and it should be available uh, in the links that I'm attaching with the show notes. And here I want to cover another aspect of the 11AX spatial reuse. My name is Srikant and I'm with NanoCell. So just a quick recap, spatial reuse implies in earlier generations, uh, we followed the logic where as soon as we hit any wireframe, Wi-Fi frame above a certain threshold, we just suspend our back off. But now, in the case of 11AX, we can potentially transmit in parallel and there are a variety of conditions. Of course, you can't do it when your same BSS traffic is going on. So that's why intra-BSS means that we need to follow the old style only for inter-BSS spatial reuse applies and of course we can do a lot of classification based on things like PSS color, spatial reuse groups, etc. There are two possibilities of spatial reuse. The first one I covered in part one is the power based spatial reuse where anybody wants to do spatial reuse will measure the power of the other BSS and accordingly uh, apply some thresholds and transmit power control. Today I want to focus on this SRP based spatial reuse where it's uh, slightly different, not necessarily using power based threshold. Okay. Uh, remember that uh, you can have both being operational at the same time and a lot of configuration possibilities to limit their usage. So how does SRP based technique work? So in SRP based technique, Typically, it's recommended for a closed group, which are uh, typically, you know, for example, in a managed environment. It could be, for example, uh, within an enterprise, uh, even within a home operating on the same channel. Uh, this could be applicable. So in this case, specifically one BSS, okay, when it is sending frames like trigger, remember it could be trigger plus data, it can open up the medium for somebody else to reuse a BSS2, though it doesn't mention explicitly BSS2, which means multiple people could use it. As long as this transmission, as an example, I've taken this transmission as the reuse transmission, does not disturb the reception of something that is expected as a part of the trigger frame. Okay. Um, so which means now that the the AP which is opening up the ground for potential spa spatial reuse also tells clearly in the trigger frame what is the interference levels allowed. And so the reuse stations, remember though I've shown here AP2 to star 2, it could be star 2 to AP2 as well, should calculate the path loss between the AP which is opening up and itself from the received signal and then calculate with what transmission power it should use so that it is below the tolerable interference levels. Okay, So it's basically very opportunistic. That's why in the original contributions, it was also called as opportunistic. Somebody offers for a limited time with certain constraints and if you are capable of using it and if somebody is capable of receiving under these conditions, these are the conditions under which this can work, you can go ahead and use it. Okay, so there's no power measurements, etc. And uh, of course, any back off that you have started, etc. You you can ignore the transmission, complete the back off. So let's see an example of how it works. So here, for example, BSS one uh, maybe uh, sending a trigger frame, maybe trigger alone, trigger plus data. So that's the PPDU where it says yes, it's okay to do spatial reuse for my. Uh, trigger whose duration information etc is available as you know in the trigger frame and along with the interference levels that I don't want you to kind of exceed by when I'm going to see your signal. So another BSS remember AP or star both can do it as long as the other guy can receive it. Uh, they if they've been doing some back off to transmit they complete their back off and once they finish their back off they also know how much time available, see how they are transmitting their data, finishing their act. So remember that in this case, unlike the power based methods, uh, we didn't do any power measurements on this. We just made sure that you know somebody else was not transmitting 
we just made sure that this was the response to this etc so those are some of the checks which have to be done and any back off so that other people who might be contending do not you know we don't collide with one another and the time during which i can reuse is also limited so time power everything is limited so these are some of the facets of srp based spatial reuse so if we want to compare this with the previous technique we can just note down a few points. Remember, spatial reuse broadly classified into a power based and an SRP based mechanism. Today we have seen SRP based mechanism. In my earlier videos, I have also shared some points on this. Both are applicable only to inter BSS. Okay, so it doesn't work within BSS. Uh, remember that in the in the power based mechanism. The, the first frame does not control where you start, where you end, whereas here it is very limited to the duration which is being triggered. Both have power requirements. This had a power requirement which comes from the standard or power control. This had a power which is kind of announced. This had, of course, carefully look at the thresholds, etc. Here there are no need to worry about threshold except that, of course, it can't be intra BSS and so on. NAVs can be ignored in both cases, so you continue your back off. And as I mentioned, there is no time limits mentioned here. It's within the triggered time that you will have to stop. Okay. So I hope that gave you an idea of spatial reuse in general, as well as the two techniques and their differences. So for more information, uh, please take a look at our websites at nanocellnetworks.com. I'll be back with more videos. Thank you.